You already know what it is. It is Workout Wednesday. What's going on with y'all, big dog? It is an amazing Wednesday for a workout. I hope that you have had a wonderful workout Wednesday. And if you aren't, don't let the things that happen in the beginning of your day ruin the rest of your day. Come on. Speaking of such, my gains have been on the successful train as of recent. We've been doing exquisite, but I want to emphasize something that not a lot of people do that really ruin your gains. A lot of people think that how you become too strong is about how much weight you lift at the gym, how hard you hit it, and then of course, how many times you do it. Now, some of that may hold true, but there's a couple of myths that I want to break. The first thing is that you don't necessarily need to lift heavy in order to be strong. I know some really strong cats out there that can't squat past 205. The second is that you need to take some sort of pre-workout in order to work out. What? Now, pre-workout does help you give you energy to work out. You don't necessarily need pre-workout. The original pre-workout was actually black coffee. There you have it for you coffee drinkers. The third is that gains are made in the gym. Ironically, that, that's not true at all. Gains are actually made by sleeping. I know, it's weird, right? You never would have guessed. Getting enough rest on top of exercising daily and of course hitting that gym is the most optimal way to get too strong, ladies and gentlemen. And one thing I wanna point out for the ladies that you can never get too buff. There's no such thing, ladies. Lift to your heart's content and lift however much you want. As long as you are lifting safely, resting and recovery, it only looks badder on you and you only look more attractive. But I know one thing that is going to work out for everyone here. It is that hand trap tier list that you have been so comfortably waiting for. That's right, guys. We're going to be going over the hand trap tier list, going over all of the viable hand traps right now. But of course, if you want something a little bit deeper, then go ahead and let me know. I'm already working on that hand trap guide that will help you guide yourself throughout the format. It should be coming fairly soon. But without further ado, let's jump on in so we can talk about this hand trap tier list. All right, big dog. So before we get into this hand trap tier list, there is a couple of things I want to talk to you about. The first thing is how hand traps are right now. I'm not going to say that hand traps are bad like I do from time to time because there are formats where hand traps aren't as good. And this is technically one of them. Those single interaction, low impact hand traps aren't as good as they were in like previous format. But if you are playing a deck that uh, maybe needs the hand traps to keep up tempo, possibly being able to slow down your opponent going first or being able to slow down your opponent in the mid to late game, then hand traps are for you. It's not every single strategy that can play those going second cards like Lightning Storm and Dark Ruler no more. But if you wanna know about how those cards do interact inside of the format, then go ahead and check out my staples tier list. With that being said, this will be reflective on as many decks as possible, while also still being able to get the information to you on how these cards could thrive and how they're working inside of this format. I'll also be making a hand trap guide, being able to detail where to use particular hand traps. So if you want to see that, go ahead and show this video a love and let me know down below in the comment section. With that being said, I have five different categories, a cut above the rest, are the hand traps that you should strongly consider being uh, playing inside of your main board or your sideboard were applicable. Or if you are playing a deck that plays hand traps, you should consider these hand traps first, all the way to the, oh no, what are you doing? Maybe these hand traps, if you are main boarding or sideboarding, you might as well just give your opponent the free win. And with that being said, we're gonna start off with Ally of Justice Cycle Reader, a card that is consistently ranked in my could be better because it can only hit decks like Drytron. The fact of the matter is there are two different types of hand traps, actually three different types of hand traps, but uh, the third one doesn't matter for this particular instance. High impact hand traps, which completely eviscerate the, you know, some of the strategies that it's going against, or the low impact hand traps, typically generic hand traps that hit certain points of decks. 
This is a high impact hand trap because it completely destroys Drytron being able to hit Benton before it can use his effect. Hitting two Drytrons in the graveyard when they use their effects, this card is huge. So if you are having a Drytron problem, then go ahead and sideboard. I wouldn't, I don't think I'd ever tell you to main board this card, but go ahead and sideboard those Ally of Justice Psycho Readers because they're that powerful. Same thing with Artifact Lancia. This card is a really, really good card, but only in the sideboard. I would not main board Artifact Lancias, um, but they're great against Phantom Knights, against Dino, against um, just so many Banish Reliant strategies like Tri Brigade. If you are having problems with those particular decks, slap these inside of your side deck. Uh, a bonus for uh, Sky Striker players, and some may not know this, is if you have your Sky Striker uh, Mecha Modules multi roll in the field and you artifact Lancia them, you can actually, you know, send the cards that would be banished if, you know, the cards that you set with your multi rolls to the graveyard because Lancia will prevent them from being banished. They go right to the graveyard and then you can reset them again with your multi roll. So, Sky Striker players, genuinely consider uh, sideboarding that artifact Lancia as this could actually even help your strategy put those Sky striker cards that would be banished back into the graveyard which could come in handy ash blossom in joyous spring um it's in my opinion i feel that ash blossom in joyous spring is the worst generic hand trap right now or one of the worst uh most played generic hand traps because it necessarily doesn't stop a specific action monster effects are really really good and i'll explain by specific action right now monster effects are really really good right now and as well as enjoys brain can't stop some of the top contending monster effects it can't stop tri brigade or lyra Lessa's effect to be able to summon from the graveyard or special summon from the extra deck it could stop their search but a lot of times that doesn't matter they have a tons of searches inside of their deck it can't stop sword soul being able to banish to special summon but what it can do is stop cards like sword soul emergence it can stop cards like triple tactics talents affect the draw it, it's kind of good so i'm just gonna go ahead and put it in the pretty good because it is still a solid hand trap that just overall can stop a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh cards chaos hunter guys chaos hunter is actually ridiculously underrated i, I never thought that i would say this again but um in a format where cards like imperial iron wall and artifact lancy are goaded this card is actually really good now of course you do have to watch out uh, because this is a monster that your opponent can interact with unlike Artifact of Lancia, which, you know, if your opponent doesn't negate the activation of Lancia, well, they can't banish with the turn. All they have to do is get over this card and seeing that it's just a 2500 attack monster, it's not necessarily that hard to do. But if you can protect the castle when it comes to this particular card, this card can be a blowout against this like Eltledge, Dino, Phantom Knight, Tri Brigade. Oh my God, this card is really, really good, but you have to have the correct deck to be able to play it. Contact C is a card that could be better in the current Yu-Gi-Oh! And the main reason is because uh, Forbidden Chalice and Forbidden Droplet being such powerful cards in the current metagame, even if you do give a particular deck this card, which could shut them off, they can always Forbidden Chalice it, or even worse, Forbidden Droplets it, which means you just gave them an additional card to use to break your board. And that's why I feel that this card isn't as powerful. I mean, same thing, point can actually be made about Chaos Hunter. Uh, which is why you have to be really careful with this card. Dama Mama. Oh, man. Oh, no. I don't want to say it. I don't want to say it because I love Dama Mama. But if we're going to be truthful, oh, man. I'm going to go ahead and put Dama Mama in the could be better. Don't break me, guys. Don't break me. If, if, if you think that I'm capped right here and this card is just, oh, no, what are you doing? Then just go ahead and tell me that I'm on Copia. But for right now, Dama Mama is a card that could be better. Look, Dama Mama has some pretty intriguing effects. The problem with Dama Mama is that you already have to be negating a card on the field more often than not to have a negated monster on the field to summon her. Also, her effects are only good when your opponent special summons from the extra deck or special summons from the main deck. The special summon from the hand is it's not gonna cut it, but Dama Mama does have Sword Soul. If people don't that don't know, her name is Sword Soul Iris. Uh, she is a Sword Soul card that can be outright special summon with Incredible Ecclesia. So it's a card that your opponent may have to interact with. Maybe you're going against a deck that special summons from the deck a lot or from the extra deck. You can Ecclesia into this card and then it's a little better. So maybe it's Copium, but I would not be playing this card in my main board or sideboard just right now. Diddy Crow is... Diddy Crow is... 
Okay, so I'm gonna put DD Crow in pretty good. And the main reason is because DD Crow is one of the more searchable hand traps. Um, and he does have some cool interactions. It's not as good. Actually, let, let's, put, let's put it down to the underrated status because it's not as good as Psycho Reader. But if you are playing like uh, Liralusk, then you can search this card. And it's a searchable hand trap. You know what I mean? And it can hit some of those really niche interactions. Like it can still hit Benton when your opponent does their Drytron combos. Um, it can banish those, uh, uh, not the, the Tenye monsters, in the graveyard before your opponent can actually make really good use of them. Uh, it, it has some very, very, very specific interactions that makes DD Crow not a terrible card, but I, I don't think that I would be mainboarding DD Crows inside of this format unless I would probably mainboard one inside of like Lyralesque where you can take advantage of being able to search it. Dimensional Shifter is, if you can mainboard Dimensional Shifter, it is still one of those cards that just wins games just outright. Every, I, I, almost every deck in Yu-Gi-Oh needs the graveyard. So opening Dimensional Shifter is literally just say, hey, you need to pass your turn so I can continue to play Yu-Gi-Oh. Droll and Lockbird is also a card that is just, oh man, this card is another card that's a cut above the rest. And if you haven't noticed all of the sideboard or all of the hand traps that are a cut above the rest, they're typically sideboard cards are really niche, which is really weird, right? But Droll and Lockbird is a card that you could main board in this format comfortably because there are so many decks that search multiple times. But if you're not main boarding it, I would not, if, like it's, a, it's an amazing sideboard card. Because as you know, it, it just ends a lot of players' turns. Droll and Lockbird is a godsend. And then, of course, as you know, Effect Veiler is a pretty good Yu-Gi-Oh card. Just being able to negate uh, Sword Soul boards, being able to negate Ultimate Azokin, uh, being able to negate uh, uh, the Diviner of Herald or Mu Beta Fafner, uh, a Tri Brigades. It, it just comes up because Monster Negation is low-key king inside of this format. So Effect Veiler is right there. Engraver of the Mark, how you guys feeling? I told you guys Crossout Designator would be a $50 card. Everybody laughed at me. Plot twist, Crossout Designator is a $40 card, and this card looks even worse because nobody's even playing Crossout Designator. So how you feeling about Engraver of the Mark, guys, being your, oh no, what are you doing, baby? Check up on those people that bought super rare copies at $5 a piece, guys. If you were one of those people and you didn't listen to me, it is what it is, but do, yeah, don't, don't do that. That was really bad. Evenly matched is consistently one of the best Yu-Gi-Oh cards. I actually don't even know why it's in here. I don't think I should consider it a hand trap. It's more of like a staple board breaker sideboard type card. But since it is a trap card that activates in your hand, I guess, um, there are a lot of great back row heavy decks. Phantom Knight plays a ton of back row. Eltlich plays a ton of back row. And they have to main board or really consider sideboarding Solemn Judgment strictly for this card. Because this card literally just wins the game outright. It, it will turn whatever board your opponent made into nothing. And they only get to keep one card. And then you can just play around that one card and keep playing Yu-Gi-Oh. This card is phenomenal. And if you haven't caught on about evenly matched, it is a great card. Uh, Fantastical Dragon Phantasme can be better. Um, it's good against Tri Brigade Pure. Um, Phantom Knights, it's pretty good against. Uh, and that's where we kind of stop because, you know, Fluanderese is not good against. Uh, Sword Soul, it's not good against. Like, it, it, it's a good sideboard card if your meta is filled with, like, Link-based decks. It's good against uh, Live Twin, but... Again, we're, we're, we're in a, more, a format where there's a lot more Exceed and Fusion uh, more than ever. And Links kind of take the back seat, uh, at least in a lot of strategies, where this card would really thrive. <sighs> I have to tell you guys, every time we go over this card, I bought this card, Ghost Sister and Spooky Dogwood, for $20 each. And I am never, 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 you should never, ever let me live this down. Every time I tell you, yo, I got right about this particular thing. If you think that I'm getting too hot-headed, just let me know. Yo, bro, chill out, Callie. Look, Uncle Callie, chill out. You bought Ghost Sisters Boogie Dog once for $20. Like, chill. Just, just chill. Like, politely tell me, yo, humble yourself. You're not a G. Keep it well with yourself, dog. This is... You still make mistakes, okay? And Spooky Dogwood is just not a good Yu-Gi-Oh card at all. Oh, man, I thought this was going to be great for Mermel. And look at Mermel. So, yeah, there's that. Um, the reason why this card's not good is because uh, gaining life points doesn't mean anything. You know what I mean? Like, if you're going to lose the game, you're going to lose the game. It doesn't matter how many life points you are. And you should look at it in the inverse. If people are main boarding and have no fear about main boarding Solemn Judgments, 
then like life points never meant anything. So whether you have more or have less, the only time that it matters is in time. And if that's the case, you probably should just be sideboarding better cards to win the matchup as opposed to relying on time. Moving forward, Ghost Bell and Haunted Mansion. This card is, oh, oh my God, I don't know. If we're talking about single points of interaction hand traps, these three and Infinite Impermanence are the best hand traps in Yu-Gi-Oh. Uh, Ghost Bell is ridiculously underrated. Um, not too many matchups that this card can affect. I guess just Sword Soul. But against Drytron, you hit Beaterionis. Against Tri Brigade, you hit Revolt. Um, against Virtual World, you hit Lao Lao. Like, th this card has an interaction for almost every Yu-Gi-Oh strategy. Against Phantom Knight, it's what do you want to hit against them? You can you can hit a lot of stuff against them. It's it's ridiculous how Ghost Bell is just great. It's it's a solid one or two of inside of your extra deck or inside of your main board. If you already are maxed out on hand traps and maybe you're looking for something else, this card hits Nadir Servant, Cypher Gear Gamma, what yada yada yada. It's just a godsend. And uh, to be honest with you, this card is fairly good. Ghost Mourner and Moonlit Show is a monster negation that actually serves as a better dogwood because it can stop the monster's effect that your opponent is trying to lose, use, and your opponent will take damage for using its effect, um, which could also come up in time. It has multiple impl implications. Uh, the reason why this card is so good though, especially for Sword Soul players, I still think Forbidden Chalice is a lot better, but if they token collector you on your turn, you can Ghost Warner it and keep playing, and that'll actually start to come up as monsters uh, I, I can feel that monsters will start being summoned on your turn. As we already know, players are starting to summon more monsters on your turn. And you can just Ghost Mortar it and then keep playing. Or Ghost Mortar it, get rid of it, inflict damage to your opponent and potentially win the game off of that. This card's actually, it's, it's kind of underrated. Uh, Ghost Ogre, you know, I had a lot of hype for Ghost Ogre. But Ghost Ogre isn't... I feel like it could be better. It's great against Fluandere's map. It's good against Sword Soul. It's good against Opelousa, but not a lot of decks are really, really playing Opelousa, like not as much as last format. Uh, Sword Soul, if you're going to side Ghost Ogres, you might as well just side another card that we have on this tier list. Um, and against Flu under Reese, I mean, that's great. If you see a lot of Sword Soul and Flu under Reese, then I mean, sh be my guest. Go ahead and main board these. But like other than that, it's almost every other matchup that I can think of. It, it just feels like it could be better and you can just play better cards in other situations. Um... I feel weird. It's like this card is actually tweener these two. So we finally found a deck that can play the pot cards. They'll play like dualities and prosperities, which means that you can actually have enough room to resolve your Ghost Reapers. Eldritch can play the dualities and prosperities. Um, and uh, Flu under Reese can play the L, which means you can actually make this card somewhat better. Now, the problem with this card is that a lot of people are, um, you know, they're, they're, of course, they're extra debt reliant because that's why Artifact Scythe is so good, but they're playing around like, they, like you, you actually need something really strong to follow up afterward. If you don't have that strong follow up, they'll just you know, play around it for a turn and then just play other things and you're just in a hole. So I do think that this card is like low key underrated, but I'm gonna put it in that could be better. No material, it's, it's not bad. The problem with no material is that you can't control any cards. Like if, if we get a deck like Necroz that comes out, like if Necroz becomes good again, back when old Necroz used to end on drawing cards from their hand and no cards on the board. This card is like, it's goaded. But until then, I'm gonna go ahead and say this card could definitely be better. Uh, Herald of Orange Light, n no, no. And same thing with Herald of Purple Light. These cards are still not good by any means. And the reason why is because inside of the deck that, um, you know, would play this, which is Drytron Herald, you just make Herald. Like Herald literally solves the problems that these two cards do too so it's like the exact same thing actually it's even worse because this has to get rid of another fairy where Harold does not have to get rid of it just only has to get rid of one fairy to negate the activation and if you're going into a board and your opponent's activating spell cards uh on your turn from their hand then i don't know what to tell you if they have the imperm they have the imperm i'm not gonna i don't think that it would be wise to play herald of purple light for infinite impermanence if they have it they have it you know if they if they don't then just make your board you're gonna win more often than not and then, of course, uh, Orange Light is the exact opposite of green and purple. This is a card that if you could play it inside of your deck, 
strongly consider. And the reason why is because I consider this on the high impact side as it does not only negate a monster effect, it also gets rid of the monster, which is huge. Um, as you can see, a lot of these hand traps, some of the good hand traps, they don't get rid of the card. They just kind of negate the card and then allow you to keep playing with the card, which is a lot of these cards downfalls, whereas Orange Light actually gets rid of the card. Uh, Infinite Impermanence is a cut above the rest as well. This is the best hand trap in Yu-Gi-Oh! when it comes to uh, generic hand traps because this card also acts as a forbidden chalice. You can activate it on your turn. Um, even after your opponent has their established board, I'll give you reasons or a strategy that could be in the hand trap counter or the hand trap guide. But yeah, this card's just really good. I mean, there's no way around it. The uh, column thing actually comes up too uh, for people that don't pay attention to columns or when you want to play that column game against your opponent. Mariota. So another card that I thought one day, one day, you will look at me, you'll be like, dang, Callie was right. He's goaded. But until then, you can look at me ridiculous when it comes to Miriota and Sword Soul uh, Iris. This card, the theory behind this card being good is that it can be searched a lot more easy since it's a dragon monster. You can Heretic Seal it. Um, you can Tempest it since it's a wind dragon. But that has not came into fruition just yet. I don't think that this card is bad. Like, it's, it's, it's not engraver of the mark or spooky dogwood bad it's just bad because it's not searchable on a wide scale level just yet but um this is a card that i'm definitely still looking to pick up i'm gonna start picking these cards up and once they go up in price you guys will be like cali you genius oh uh, i'm trying hey man i gotta i gotta i gotta big up myself if i'm not bigging up myself and i'm spending all this money oh i'd be a sad guy Nibiru is a card that definitely is a cut above arrest. Just like Drolling Lockbird, you can main or sideboard Nibiru. Um, you just have, you're going to pay for decks like Flew Under East or uh, Sword Soul players that are smart. They're just going to make She Shall pass or they're going to make Better On first. And then you're like, well, now you got to use the Nib on the Better On and they kind of like, you know, still keep comboing. So Nib is just a really, really, really powerful Yu-Gi-Oh card that allows you to equalize boards um as you can see there are a lot of hand traps that you could be sideboarding not really a lot that you could be mating unless you count droll and nibiru cards that you could play inside of your main board but maybe more suited to your sideboard depending on what you play uh epsilon does negate spells but normally those spell cards being used are spell cards to get rid of your monsters which means you have monsters on your field so epsilon could be better um Players will start playing Lambda, which I think is going to be really good. Lambda, and once Lambda is played, this card becomes a lot better. Once Lambda does come into rotation. But Epsilon is, is, is just, just for that sheer reason. Lightning Storm could destroy spells and traps, but I mean, it's, it's probably going to destroy monsters. So this card, it's not bad. It's just not great. On the opposite hand, Cyber Gear Gamma is another card that is a cut above the rest for the sheer reason why... Herald of Orange Light is a cut above the rest. Um, these two cards not only negate the monster effect, they get rid of the monster too. Red Reboot, oh man, main board or sideboard, Red Reboot needs to be in your deck. This card is phenomenal. Uh, uh, Phantom Knights, Outlets, they all fear this card. It's like, oh man, if you, if you play this card, you might get it. Retaliating C, I'm going to say this card's underrated. Because you can retaliating see in response to your opponent's destiny, uh, your your opponent's fusion destiny, and this card, <laughs> the reason why uh, Destiny Hero Destroy Your Phoenix Enforcer is so good is because it's in Dasher and Celestial into the graveyard, and this obviously stops it. Shut off fusion and invocation are also other really powerful cards that this card stops. Uh, Meteorionis Drytron is also another spell card. This card does put a lot of uh, 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 on notice of a card. It's it's really good right now. And another card that's severely underrated is Saravis. I did discuss how Forbidden Chalice is one of the most powerful cards in Yu-Gi-Oh. I don't think Forbidden Droplets targets, but I do know Effect Veiler and Imperm target cards that are pretty much in everybody's deck. So Ravis is sneaky, sneaky good being able to stop those non-targeting card effects. Um, it's, it's a fairly good card. Not every deck can play it, but for the decks that can afford to play that Saravis and stop your opponent from targeting some of your critical monster effects, it, it's, it's a sneakily underrated card. Uh, I'm going to have to say the same thing for Skullmeister, being able to stop Meteorionis Drytron, being able to stop 
uh, your sword soul opponent sword soul cards in the graveyard that activate phantom knight monsters that's low-key good at certain times like this card has its moments where it's really really good and then it has its moments where it's just like oh, okay it's just a free disruption again if you are playing a strategy that can afford to play a ton of hand traps uh, maybe don't need you know you don't care about targeting then consider skullmeister if you've already filled out which are pretty good in a cut above the rest and then the last card is token collector i don't know if you know about token collector but it's it's a cut above the rest this card is literally um the sword soul version of uh ally of justice psycho reader just because it ends the sword soul players turn they have to play uh chalice they have to play cards like ghost mourner and you put them on hey yo do you got it like do you if you don't okay i'm gonna you know, your turn's over. Pass it up. Do you have the... Inf no, you can't... Mm -mm. Nope. Can't even... Nope. Mm -mm. Nope. Pass it up. This card's... It's really good against them. So, if you are having Drytron... Again, if you are having Drytron or Sword Soul, really big problems, consider playing those into your sideboard. Artifact Lancia, we've already named the decks that it's good against. Phantom Knights, Tri Brigade, Dino. Um, any deck that really needs to banish. Droll and Lockbird, you know all of the strategies that it's good against. Shut all um uh Liralus because Liralus searches out the wazoo it's just a very very good card and then the rest are just really good generic cards that get rid of your opponent from monster effects and the stops your opponents from summoning infinite impermanence is your fourth fifth and sixth forbidden chalice and that is all that i have for the hand trap tier list one thing i want to get to you is that i am streaming today on twitch 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, sometimes 5, I'm feeling a little lazy, but it's not only 5. Also, if you want to check out more amazing Cali Effect content, go ahead and check out these videos as I'll catch you on the next one.